What's up, my 64th Gear Jammers? I'm Logan, the founder of Advantage Diecast, and I'm out here at this old gas station to talk about a green light building and the Pure Oil Company. Before we get into it, I'll give you a quick moment to subscribe, as Thursday will be another field trip episode that you won't want to miss. Also, you can get many of the green light collectibles buildings on my website, farmtoysandmore.com. Our story about the Pure Oil Company begins with its founding in 1914. Before that, three different oil companies operating in the United States have used the Pure Oil name. The first of the three companies began in the fall of 1895 as a group of independent oil refiners, producers, and pipeline operators. Setting up in Butler, Pennsylvania, with headquarters in Pittsburgh, although it was incorporated in New Jersey. The Pure Company was organized by independent interest to counter the dominance of Standard Oil Company in Pennsylvania oil fields and was the second oil company after Standard in the region. Operations were based in Oil City, Pennsylvania. David Kirk was elected the first president and then he was succeeded in 1896 by James W. Lee. Pure Oil sold illuminating oil in Philadelphia and in New York City. The second company, the Pure Oil Producing Company, was incorporated in 1902. In 1904, a refinery was built on the Delaware River, which received 600 barrels per day from the United States pipeline. This was increased to 1,800 barrels per day. The third Pure Company began when Demon Gates Dawes, his brothers and partner Fletcher Heath, whose Columbus-based Ohio City's Gas Company, which had begun in 1914, made an offer of $24.50 a share for the Pure Oil Producing Company. Dawes was building an Oklahoma refinery, and Pure Oil had production capabilities there which would benefit his company. The Pennsylvania Pure Oil Producing Company accepted the offer. Beeman Dawes served as president of Pure Oil until 1924, when he became chairman of the board of directors and stayed until 1948. In 1920, Ohio City's gas company's name changed to Pure Oil. In 1926, the headquarters moved to Chicago. Refineries were located in Ohio, West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Texas. In the late 1920s, Pure Oil made a contract to deliver gasoline and oil to another Ohio gasoline company, Hickok Oil Corporation of Toledo, Ohio. The contract called for Pure Oil to be paid in stock such that on August 1st, 1945, Pure Oil would own Hickok Oil. When Pure Oil took control of Hickok, they rebranded the high-speed gas stations as Pure. The high-speed stations were built of white glazed brick with an iconic square tower over the door, about one quarter the width of the building and slightly taller than the height of the rest of the building, which had a flat roof. By the 1960s, sales were $700 million a year, and Pure Oil ranked as one of the country's 100 largest industrial companies. The headquarters at that time were in northwestern Chicago suburb, Schaumburg. And the company motto was, be sure with Pure. A major change for Pure Oil. In 1965, Union Oil Company of California purchased Pure Oil. Shortly after the acquisition by Union Oil, Pure Oil's refining and marketing operation became the Pure Oil Division of Union Oil Company of California with the Pure Oil name continuing in full force. The growth of the Pure brand during the 50s and 60s, especially in the Southeast, 
coincided with the growth in the popularity of stock car racing. As Pure was one of the more visible petroleum brand sponsors of the sport during this era. Pure, and later Union 76, was the official fuel of NASCAR, a relationship that lasted over 50 years, ending in 2003. Sunoco has since replaced 76 as the official fuel of NASCAR. By 1970, the Pure Oil brand was phased out, and remaining service stations and auto truck stops were rebranded as Union 76. The Pure Oil Division was merged with Union Oil's West Coast Refining and Marketing Division to become the Union 76 Division. After 1970, the Pure Oil name was retained as a registered trademark, but when Unical announced it was pulling out of the Southeast in 1992, this provided an ideal opportunity for a group of independent petroleum marketers to purchase and resurrect the Pure brand and Firebird trademark, which Unical had long since abandoned. In 1996, Pure Oil became the holding company for three independent pipeline companies. The modern day Pure Oil is still going strong with approximately 340 members within its 10 original southeastern states with future growth anticipated. Have you ever got fuel at a Pure station? And this is Greenlight Collectibles Vintage Gas Station from the Mechanics Corner series. It's decorated up for pure oil and pure gasoline. It's a limited edition piece. It comes in this nice hardboard box with clear plastic windows so you can see inside the model and see what the model looks like inside. It is mostly plastic, but there are some die cast parts, the gas pumps and the doors in particular. Their packaging is pretty nice. It is very specific to the actual item in the box. You can see the pure logos are on it all over. It's got this little window cut out on this side so you can see inside the mechanics bay. And while you're not seeing a wall there, the wall is actually included in the box. Then here's the back of the box. Functional die cast garage doors, die cast gas pump, and roof. One removable wall to expose the interior. Now, if you notice, it shows the picture with the roof on. There is no roof section to go over the garage. It only goes over the little shop area. And it is the Mechanics Corner Series. There's the other side. Vintage gas station. Very nice for your diorama. And on the back it just has the copyright and item number and barcode. It is Greenlight's item number 57031. Pretty cool. Easy to open this box up. It's just a hardboard sleeve and it has a two-piece blister inside. The roof section and the wall that are missing, I'll show you as soon as I get it out, are right there. They are inside little plastic bags inside the box. That way they're protected when they put in, so you can put them on when you get, get them yourself. Now just lift her out, set it down, and then get these side pieces out. And we'll get that out of the way. All right, now let's turn it around to the front so we can see it, and then I'll show you these pieces first. This is the one side piece that's not installed. You can see it has the pure, be sure with pure, and then the firebird there, and then the blue stripe. The blue stripe goes all the way around the building, and that blue stripe is, and the logo is a sticker that's just uh, stuck on the sides. The brick pattern is molded in. You can also see it's in this little plastic bag. Not gonna get it out, but that's the idea. It's real simple, this little tab and this, it just all clips right in place just like that and you'd have a complete building just pop take it out of the bag and there you go not gonna do it though the roof section here it is a die cast piece hear that and it's just a blue piece it's also in a bag 
and it's got two little tabs here which go in the hooks up there on the roof and then the slots go around the plastic so that it looks like this when it's all done and you have a roof over the little um, shop and office area of the bay real easy real simple why they didn't give us the rest of the top I don't know now we'll start off here with the front both doors they open exactly the same way and they slide up they don't roll up they just flip and slide up but that's good enough especially for the price these things are not expensive I mean they're 20 25 dollars a piece great little item to put on your 64th diorama so they're functional and durable they also have this little piece of plastic and you'll probably see it all the way around and that's what keeps the doors from flopping while it's in the package see like that one I took this one loose so that we could show it off the gas pumps over here is two pure gas pumps and they are actually die cast pieces and they're attached to this uh, curb area with the post that is plastic the rest of the building is all plastic the pumps and the doors are die cast it has clear hard plastic for the windows on the office and the little shop area and it says pure premium be sure with pure yes we're open on the door a pure logo and a pure written there and then the glass is trimmed in blue paint that way you can see the frames for the doors and the windows pretty cool then the blue stripe goes across it's just a sticker on these things then you got the pure pure bumper to bumper service and then pure oil company firebird racing gasoline and each of the doors has something different oil change gear oil chassis lubrication wheel alignment tires and batteries pretty cool and then you got your two gas pumps and then they got some writing on them for gallons and price per gallon and total sale pretty nice this side here you can see inside the mechanics bay i'll tip it up a little you can see how they got a sticker on the floor that has some tread pattern for tires from like it'd been through the oil some oil slicks on the concrete and cracks in the concrete you can see that the way the door is it just flips up like that and then slides back into those slots and there's a set of slots for the other door the inside walls the brick pattern is just printed on a sticker and then stuck on as is the pure oil company firebird racing gasoline logo which is really cool there right there and the door over into this uh, little shop area that's just printed on in the wall sticker over to the back you can see we have the brick pattern that that's what the walls are molded in is this brick pattern on the outside then they put the pure logos and customer parking only that is all one big sticker on this model and what you're seeing here don't worry about that it is the that little plastic strap that they put around to keep the doors from flopping open when you put it all together that'll be gone and you won't have to worry about it now to this side you can see the shop area is bigger than the little store area and it has another window here that is trimmed out in blue for the window frames and it's clear plastic and then they put the pure oil company firebird racing gasoline logo on the window like a window cling and it is actually a sticker stuck on the inside now the front door doesn't open but the garage doors do now let's I'm gonna have to take the camera loose in order to talk about the inside alrighty then now we can see it there is the counter where the um, mechanic would be working and ringing up his sales you can see the door over into the shop and you can see along the back wall it looks like it's got uh, some groceries looks like two liters of pop cans of pop and some other stuff on the back wall you know snack food and drinks then you can see that big pure be sure with pure logo painted on the back wall now the inside is also a sticker just like the uh, shop area the inside of the store area is also a sticker come over to this side 
you can see more cans of pop, two liter bottles of pop and other drinks and stuff on the wall and the racks. Then the, above the door, it says employees only into the shop area. And then you can see that this is just a sticker there. Around to the front doors, you can see it says, sorry, we're closed on the inside because they're open at the moment. And you can see how the window is put in place. It's just clipped in with those four little points. Pretty simple. Also, you can see the checkerboard floor and the back of, the, of all the window clings. Same on this wall. They did a really, really nice job. It's just I wish they had given us that one roof section. To me, it looks silly without that other piece of roof. Don't know why they didn't do it, but they really, really should have. After all, they gave us the missing wall piece. They should have gave us the roof. Anyway, guys, that is the Mechanics Corner Series Vintage Gas Station for Pure Firebird Racing Gasoline. It is a beautiful, pure station that would make a great piece on your layout. Wasn't that building cool? For the price, it has great potential to enhance our dioramas. You can buy green light buildings on my website, farmtoysandmore.com, and there's a link to it down in the description below. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back with another field trip episode of Toy Talk soon.